Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode it's my pleasure to walk you through my top six favorite features of Photoshop CS6. That's right, it's time for a new version of Photoshop and I know this is a day that many of you anxiously await, so let me get right to my top six favorite features. So my first one, I'm going to start out kind of slow and ramp up to my top, top favorite, but I'm going to say my first one is the new and improved crop tool. And I know you're probably thinking cropping, really, a new tool? Well, people do more, you know, if, if you look at the number one thing that people do to their photos, besides, you know, adjusting and compositing and all that, the number one thing people want to do is crop. So the crop tool really hasn't been a, a touched or enhanced in several years. So the team finally decided to take a new look at cropping. And I actually like it because it, to me it's more like Lightroom's cropping. So the minute you go to the crop tool, you get handles to pull from, and you still have the ability to drag a manual crop if you want. So you can drag a manual crop if you want, and that becomes the crop, or you can just pull the handles in. But the main thing here, besides the uh, just getting used to the way the new crop works, is that it's non-destructive unless you want it to be. So in other words, I have delete cropped pixels turned off, and that means it will not throw away the data um, until I'm ready for it to throw away the data or never. And by the way, you always have the ability to go back to the classic mode. So if you prefer, if you say, hey, no, I'm used to my old crop tool, you can always get back to it. But let's say we want to accept this crop. Uh, actually, we're going to crop it in just a little bit more. And we want to accept that. And then we go on and, you know, work on other things. We, For example, we bring up the levels and we make a levels adjustment. And we click OK. And then we decide, hey, I kind of want some more of that image back. Well, no problem. Just like in Lightroom, you head back to your crop tool. And the minute you start dragging your handle, you get the rest of your picture back. So you can recompose, you can crop uh, to your heart's content. And you might notice that I have it constrained to the original aspect ratio of the photo. You can have it unconstrained and crop it any way you want. And of course you have all your standard sizes, including the ability to save your own presets. So that's a big improvement and as far as I'm concerned in cropping. And it's again, it's something people do every single day. Okay, so the crop tool is one. And you know, I'm kind of glossing over something here that you may have noticed, and that is the UI or user interface to Photoshop. I'm not going to count it as one of my top six favorite things, but it is one of my favorite things. So you can control the UI, you can make it darker, um, you can control, the, you know, the panels have been streamlined, a lot of the clutter has been taken away, it's just a nicer way to work in Photoshop. But again, I'm not going to count that, we're just talking about my top six. So let's go to my next photo here. And in this next photo, I kind of want to draw attention to two things. I want to draw attention to this woman who's looking over to her side here, and this guy who's kind of walking up, you know, carrying uh, these tubes of paper, it looks like. Well, in photography, you could use a shallow depth of field, but typically you're only going to be able to concentrate that shallow depth of field on one area of the photo at a time, photographically. But now, with the new filters, we have an entire new blur gallery of filters. We have a field blur, iris blur, and a tilt shift blur right here in Photoshop to not only do the th kinds of things that you could do photographically, but to do the things you can't do photographically. So for example, I'm going to grab the new iris blur, and I can pick this up. I can move this around to center my point of focus. I have the ability to grab the controls here and dial in whatever I want. But the beauty of this interface is that I can do it all directly from, uh, from the interface itself. So I can uh, reshape my blurred area. I can dial up or dial down the blur. So if I want everything really out of focus or everything kind of maybe still in focus for the most part, but still putting the major part of the focus on her, I can do that. I can, of course, control the uh, size of it and uh, the area or, or the... Uh, what I want to call it, the amount that it's going to do as it goes out. Now, again, that could have been done photographically. But what can't be done photographically is I can, can't say that, hey, by the way, I want to add a new pin and put this guy's face in focus. 
So now I have both pins to go back and forth on and control, and I can control them independently. So I can say, well, make the rest of the area blurry by this control point or by this control point. So those are the kinds of things that the blur gallery of filters will allow me to do that, again, uh, had I done something photographically great, you know, I always choose to do it in camera whenever possible, but if I wanted to enhance it beyond what I could do in camera, these filters are going to be great. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that, and that becomes my new shallower depth of field based on just the control points that I put on the photo. All right, my next one uh, is a photo that I took uh, back, I think, in 2010 in Munich. And as you can see, I kind of took it with my wide angle or fishing fish or fisheye lens. And um, while I kind of got the desired effect of a fisheye, what's not really cool here are the curvature of the buildings. And of course, uh, we had a filter, or we still have a filter called lens correction. And lens correction will automatically identify the lens and camera and everything that I use, and it will try and straighten out the photo. But the first thing you may know is that it cropped the photo, and while it did kind of do a good job, it didn't do a great job in straightening some of these things out. So I'm going to cancel it, and we're going to go into, um, and again, lens correction is still there if you want it, but I'm going to prefer the adaptive wide angle for this shot. And here's why. Not only does it um, bring up, and it tries to do an auto adjustment right off the bat, but you'll notice that it did not crop my photo. I did not lose the rest of the photo. So I have all my data to work with. And next, it's identified, just like the um, lens correction did, the camera and lens that I use to do this. So it knows what adjustments I can make and what I can't make. So for example, if I just drag a line, now it's adapting the curvature of that line to this line automatically. I'm not dragging it curved, it's just doing that because I, it identified what kind of camera and lens I did or used and it knows how to curve that point or that path to straighten out the photo based on the data and metadata on the image on what kind of photo this was or what this was taken with. So here, let's go ahead and drag this one out. Oops, I did that one by mistake there, let's do that. And again, I can continue to straighten out these areas based on just dragging these lines and control points to adjust the photo to my heart's content. And you're going to get carried away with this. You know, it's going to be easy. You know, just, just keep finding lines you want to straighten out. But I think you're going to re reach a point to where you're kind of done. So I've not only now straightened this photo out, but I've made the buildings straighter than they were before with the automatic method because I can get in and do this myself. Now, I still have the ability to crop by just simply scaling the image or just hitting OK and cropping it with the crop tool, either way. But now when I click OK, actually a little bit more there. When I click OK, I've got a much better custom result than what I would have had had I done it with uh, the auto lens correction. So that's the adaptive wide angle filter. And that is my number three favorite feature of Photoshop CS6. So now let's jump to number four. My fourth one is actually going to start out by showing you a video. And this video, here, let's just go ahead and play it. Short little video there. And to any video editor, they would say, oh, you know, I could kind of see some things I would have done in maybe Adobe Premiere or maybe After Effects. But what if I told you that entire video was completely edited and composited and put together in Photoshop CS6? That's right. Photoshop CS6 extended, I, or Photoshop CS6, I have the ability to edit video like I did before, but it's been much, uh, much more streamlined in the way it works. So let's go ahead and go to my timeline here. And I kind of have uh, multiple layers, as you would in most Photoshop files. I have adjustment layers. I have um, standard layers. I have layer sets. I have all these kinds of different layers going on. And those layers mimic exactly what's on my timeline. So if I click on the vignette copy, well, I'm actually clicking, even though it looks like a bar in my timeline, I'm actually clicking on that particular layer. So I can have a mixture of different Photoshop things. I can have images, I can have text, I can have layer sets, I can have adjustments. 
I can have anything I want. And what makes this so cool is I don't have to be a video editor to know how to edit video inside of Photoshop. It helps, but it's not necessary. And also, I don't have to think about this as a video editing tool. I think about it and approach it like I would Photoshop. So if I want to run a filter, if I want to make an adjustment, if I want to use a brush, I do those kinds of things to my objects on the timeline to adjust them. But I also have the ability to work with it like a video. So I can go ahead and scrub the timeline here. And of course, this is showing me a video playing with a Photoshop uh, texture over it and a vignette layer on top of that. And uh, we get here and we've got three photos that were kind of composited together. We can click on that to see where they are inside the um, in layers panel. And then I have another piece of video here. And this video is the girl walking uh, down the hill here. And I have the ability to, of course, you know what? Before it gets to the fast paced uh, still images uh, flipping by, I want to kind of extend that out a little bit. I want to make that video just a little bit longer. I can do that. Great. And I want to fade it real quick before it jumps to the fast pace. In other words, kind of make build, build a dram dramatic uh, effect here. So I'm just going to go over to my, um, my transitions. And here they are, clearly labeled plain English. I want to drag a fade right on the end of that clip. So just that easily, I've added a fade to my video. So now if we play it back right here inside Photoshop, there's my fade, then my fast pace still and then my uh, text that fades up and fades down. So there you have it, video editing. Easier, faster, better than it ever was before inside Photoshop. And again, as we're not trying to take away from video editors like Premiere and Premiere Elements. If you're a video editor, by all means, stick with the tools you love. But for people that have never approached video or were always afraid to approach video, it's much more approachable in the tool you already know how to use. And since it's hard to buy a camera these days that doesn't do video. You're going to appreciate being able to take that video that you've been shooting uh, with your phone, with your camera, with your point and shoot, and now edit that, even with your DSLR video, directly inside Photoshop, and then export it out, ready to go. All right, so that was number four. Now we get to some more exciting things. Let's jump over to my fifth favorite feature. I've got a photo here that I actually took when I was in Denmark. And I took it and made it an HDR. And it's actually large and hanging on my wall in my home. But the problem is, uh, every time I walk past this photo, there's one thing that bugs me about it. And that's this little dark reflection here in the water. And that's, you know, that is in the photo. That's not a smudge on the print. It's in the photo being reflected off something above the water. Uh, but it always bugs me. And I could have corrected it, but I normally would try and correct something like that with a patch tool unless it's like this. It's on the edge of the photo. And that's because prior to CS6, here's how the patch tool worked. You would make a selection. And if you tried to drag along, you know, drag something that was on the edge off the edge, you would get this. You'd get kind of it's trying to patch using the edge. So you're going to get like this color, this white, this dark, whatever. And it's just not going to do a great job along edges. So we've learned to live with it or learn to drag along the edge to kind of patch. So I'm going to undo. And I'm going to now switch it to Content Aware. That's right. The patch tool gets some Content Aware goodness um, in CS6. So now I'm going to do the same drag in the area that I just drug it to. And voila, it works. Just like that. So you're going to enjoy the patch tool and know what you're thinking. When would you ever turn that off? And I can... Agree. I can't think of a time where I'm going to want to turn that off. But that is my fifth favorite new feature about Photoshop CS6 is the content aware patch. All right. So we've reached number six. Let's go to number six. And I know it's the one you've been waiting for. I'm going to jump over to a photo I did uh, in Arizona. I did this photo up in Page, Arizona. Uh, that's my rental car. And I kind of wish I could move that car over a little bit more to the right. But the problem is that's the car. That's on a background. There is no extra car layer to just move. <sighs> so that would mean creating the layer, cloning it, copying it somehow onto the layer, and then painstakingly getting rid of the old car that would have been behind it. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, make a selection? And here, we'll use something very accurate like the lasso. 
joking, joking, don't shoot me. And we'll make our selection here, kind of a loose selection around it. Okay, so made a selection that anyone can make. But now we're going to use a brand new tool. This new tool is in Photoshop CS6, and it is called the Content Aware Move Tool. So this is going to do the two things that I used to have to do manually and separately, and that is to move something and then Content Aware fill it back in. Now I have one tool that does it for me. So we'll just pick up the car, and again, there's the old one behind, just like it would have done in the past. But, and I'm still in the background. I'm just letting go. And now this is where the magic comes in to where it uses the content aware technology to fill in where the car used to be. And I'm still on a background. So it did not, you know, do any extra work or any extra layers or anything that I didn't need. It basically said, oh, you want to move that? And I assume you want to not leave a hole. I'll get rid of that hole for you and content aware fill it with the surrounding area. So those are my top six favorite features of Photoshop CS6. More to come, many more features. I just wanted to cover my top six today. Enjoy Photoshop CS6. It's been worth the wait, and you're just going to love it. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.